There's an opinion you should run cost caps fully in your ad account. Here's why I think that's a mistake and why there's not a single ad account that actually scaled using cost caps. Let's start with why using the cost caps for creative testing is not a great idea. Number one, people who preach cost caps for testing are arguing that you need to spend a lot of money to reach the statistical significance in your regular testing campaign. But on the other side, that they're okay with Facebook spending a couple of dollars and determining it's not a good enough creative. It's just double standards in evaluating results. It makes no sense to me to require two different things just because they are tested in two different rates. In one way, we want to reach statistical significance, in the other you're okay spending just a couple of bucks to determine the winner. Number two, the approach of determining whether the ad is a winner or not just by the fact that it gets spent seems like a lottery to me. It's a black or white approach. There are a lot of the ads that initially were not great but by observing the metrics we can learn something from them, iterate on it and get an ad that's a potential winner. If there's no spend in cost caps, there's no learning. If there's no learning, I cannot improve my results and I want to learn from my tests. Imagine launching a three minute VSL and just discarding it and telling to your creative team, it just did not get any spend and like it's a bad video and you potentially spent 2K to get that VSL created. And in the world where creative is actually making a difference, I don't want to limit myself to launching an ad and discard the concept completely just because it did not get spent. Number three, people that are running cost caps they want to get one ultimate winner that would get most of the spend but i don't necessarily want my ad to beat my current winning ad i want my new ads to support that winning ad i would rather have one winning ad and four supporting ads spending a total of 10k ad account with a ROAS of 1.8 instead of having just one winning ad that's spending 5k with a total ROAS of 2 it just doesn't make sense so the fact that i require that my ad must beat my existing winning is not something that I need in order to scale. Maybe that's the reason why CostCap Gang and I have a different approaches to scaling the ad account. Number four, the ad success heavily depends on the outside factors. For example, like Black Friday or 4th of July. That's why often you see an ad delivering and crushing one day and barely spending the other day. When you have a new creative that's not spending any money, you don't know if it's not spending because one, it's a bad timing of the launch or two, it's just a bad creative. When you cannot isolate the reason, you cannot make a proper decision. Number five, in order for cost caps to work, we assume that the Facebook delivers the ad in the perfect environment and it could spend only if it can deliver the results under the target CPA. But there are multiple times I saw the ad set spending but still not delivering the results under the target. It sounds great in theory, but it doesn't always work in practice because I audited multiple fully cost cap ad account that had CPA way way higher than what the bid was. To be honest, I would really like to hear from the cost cap gam what's the reason for that. Although Facebook is super robust, can it really determine the success of a creative without an impression? I'm not so sure. Don't get me wrong. I like to use my cost caps for scaling, but I think it should not be used for testing. I personally use them when I have a winning audience or a winning ad combination and I want to squeeze some additional juice with the cost caps. So what should be the main goal of using cost caps for your ads? It's to try to find that sweet spot between the spend or deliverability and the results at the target KPI. So I move my ads to cost caps only when I have a winning combination of the audience and the ad. That way there's a low chance of that ad set having bad results because we already have a proven setup. I usually begin with that testing my bids with plus five, minus five, and at target CPA. Let's say, for example, your target CPA is 50. I would launch the same ad set with a bid of 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. Here's why. It's way better than manually adjusting the bids on one ad set. After a few days, you will notice which bid is got the most spent at the target CPA. Then you start adjusting from there with the even smaller ranges of one or two dollars. So tip here with using the same ad set with multiple bids is to always use ABO because if you use the same ad set, if you use the same setup in a CBO, Facebook would just spend most of the budget on the ad set that had the highest bid, which makes more sense because there's Facebook has the most room to find a customer under the highest bid. The conclusion for cost caps, they can help and I definitely use them sometimes for scaling, but they're not a silver bullet that would double your account loss with the same creative on the same amount of spend as on the highest volume. Let me know if there's something else you 
want to know about manual bids, either about cost caps or bid caps. On the other side, if you want me to implement a scaling structure with manual bids in your ad account, book a call below, but only if you're spending 50k on Facebook ads.